Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Whatever Happened To. So today I am covering a little bit of a story that is, for me, fortunately enough, very compact. It started in 2015 and it's still going right now in 2020. That's only six years, that's, that's nothing. I've seen much worse with Artemis Fowl and Avatar. Those things have been going on for literal decades. This one, nice, straightforward, and the very, very obvious threat of this, whatever happened to you, is the fact that two different studios just told the director of the movie to go f*** himself several times. So, you know, it's gonna be fun for everybody involved. Maybe not the director, but you see what I mean. So today we're talking about the new Mutants movie, the superhero movie that can't catch a break. Well, it might get a break in the box office when it flops terribly and nobody watches it, but we'll, we'll get there. We start in 2014 with the everybody's favorite director that directed the movie where every single teenager has cancer and it's super sad and not manipulative in any way, The Fault in Our Stars. Josh Boone. He created a comic book to show the Fox executives that the New Mutant series, the New Mutants trilogy had so much potential. You can never say that uh, fan fiction doesn't get you anywhere. I don't know if that place where he got was nice and as we go on with the story you most likely agree with me that it was not. We go to 2016 where the director decides that the main villain was gonna be a character called Demon Bear. Yes, he looks as goofy as he sounds. I love you, Demon Bear. I hope nothing bad's happened to you. This is a little bit of foreshadowing. The reason why the director decided to have Demon Bear as the main villain of this movie, well, the reason he gave was very strange. According to him, his parents believed in the rapture, believed the devil was real, and believed in demons. Very useful to me. I'm glad I know that now. Originally, The New Mutants was supposed to come out in April of 2018 and we're still in 2020 and we haven't seen anything in theaters just yet. So you probably know that uh, there have been a lot of problems that popped up in behind the scenes that didn't get this movie to be released in, back in 2018 and problems definitely showed up from time to time and by time to time I mean all the time. And all, all the time, I mean towards the director, because every time he tried to do something new... Oh yeah, no, you know what, no, yeah... Now, the director came out later on saying that the movie that he wanted to make, the movie that he was inspired to do with the new mutant, something that was different than anything we've seen before with comic book movies, that's kind of why I got interested in the movie to begin with, was that he wanted to make a full-fledged horror movie set within the X-Men universe. The, the, the only problem for the director, the only little uh, thing that he could not have expected is that, for context, the last movie that had been in theaters at the time was X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah, you, f you forgot that was a thing, didn't you? So X-Men Apocalypse was a movie that did not do very well, uh, critically speaking, and also didn't do very well financially speaking. Sure, the movie made 500 million dollars, that's nothing by the way for these types of blockbuster superhero movies, the average is at least 600 million, and this movie costed 178 million dollars, and that's just in the production, now counting marketing or distribution. So yeah, that 500 million that they made, it did not look very big for the people in charge, and this led them to look at what the director said about the movie being a full-fledged horror that was something unproven un and nobody knew what it was gonna do. Was it gonna make money? Probably not. So they looked at that thing that he said and said to him, no, you don't make this movie. You go away and you go do something else. Now, you might think that I'm exaggerating, making things up to make jokes out of them. No, the, the director straight up just said that. They came up to him and asked, Hey, uh, do you know that horror movie you want to make? Can you make just a, a young adult movie instead? That would be great. Uh, now, I don't know why Fox thought it was a good idea in 2018 to make a young adult movie, even though young adult movies haven't been doing as well in theater since 2015, but sure. Unfortunately for me and everybody, there are terrible news to come. So when he was told to, to rewrite the script because Apocalypse failed, we lost Demon Bear as the main villain. 
Now, the director says that he will be in some shape or form in the movie, but we all know it's not the same. We can never have the same demon bear as the villain, and for that, I am deeply sorry. Good night, sweet prince. You will be missed. Good night. Now, in 2017, the studio saw how successful its chapter one had been and realized that cheap horror movies can make a shit ton of money. Something that for some reason they didn't think of, even though that was proven since, I don't know, Paranormal Activity Part 1, but you know, executives, producers, studios, they don't give a f about ideas, about genres. They only care about the most important thing, and that's when they see those sweet dollars flowing in the air, they can go, yeah, let's just do that instead. So uh, they went back to the director, told them, hey, do you know how uh, we told them not to do the thing that you wanted and then told you to do a young adult thing instead? Don't do that. Go back to what you wanted to do originally and, and just do a horror movie now. Uh, at this point in time, the director had wrapped filming everything for the movie. He filmed what he was told to do only for the studio to come in and be like, nah man, we're just joking bro, it's just a prank, why are you mad, it's just a game. And then told him to just do it again. Really, really showing you your vested interest on uh, just not giving a f of what directors actually want to do, unless it shows up that it can possibly give you some sort of wealth. It, it, it's really nice to see how Hollywood is straight up not cynical at all. Ah, the magic of filmmaking. Still alive today, for sure, definitely. A, yeah. It's great to see these comments by the director. He, here, here it is. Him literally just saying that he felt neutered by, by the whole experience of having to not make the horror movie that he wanted to make. So if you needed more reasons to help this movie flop terribly, there you go, the director wasn't even happy about the movie he was making before he was told not to make it, even though it was the movie that he wanted to make in the beginning. It's getting really confusing, trust me, I'm confused just talking about it, but we'll get to something that makes some sense as we go along. In 2018, this movie gets pushed again for the new release to be in February of 2019. And the reason given for this movie to not really release at the time was so that Deadpool and the movie wouldn't be in theaters at the same time. Clearly showing the preferential treatment that proven things that give studio monies get while this guy just gets at every step of the way. Only two months after his movie gets pushed, it gets pushed again now to be released in August of 2019 because it's now giving space for Dark Phoenix. So Dark Phoenix has more preferential treatment than this movie. And Dark Phoenix is supposed to make money for Fox. That didn't work out in any way. Dark Phoenix is literally one of the biggest flops of 2019. Nice, great job. Also, now that the movie had been pushed again to August of the same year, the studio just came up to the director and told him to reshoot approximately 50% of his movie. 50 percent of reshoots because you know when you're just stitching back a movie like it's a mismatched Lego set that always creates such classic movies such successful films they all do so well in box office great classics like Suicide Squad, Justice League, Solo, A Star Wars Story, 47 Ronin, World War Z, Fan Stick, Monster Trucks, John Carter, you, you get my point. The thing is, uh, reshoots, heavy reshoots that were not motivated by actual directorial input usually don't lead to good things. They lead to terrible, awful, weird looking CGI around Superman's lips. In 2019, the, the Disney nation attacked and, and then they acquired Fox and they revealed a secret so dreaded by everybody, but nobody dared speak. They revealed that the new Mutants reshoots still hadn't happened and weren't even planned. Oh my god, it's almost like the director is just waiting to be told what movie he will be allowed to make so he doesn't have to go back on the things that he just finished filming and be told to do it again. It's almost like you're creating a really annoying environment for the director to create things that he wanted to create from the beginning. It's almost like that's the case. Oh my god, who would have funk? By the way, uh, the thing that I just said out loud, 
about the reshoots not being planned or even having any inklings of when they were gonna happen. Maisie Williams, yes, she's in the movie, remember that? You don't remember that, you don't know about this movie. Nobody knows about this movie. This movie's gonna come out, who knows? Maybe it'll come out in theaters. Maybe it'll come out in Hulu. Maybe it'll come out never and you'll never see it again. But she just confirmed that indeed nothing happened. We have no idea what we're doing. Great. Oh, and to nobody's surprise, the movie got pushed again. Now not being released in 2019, now being planned to release in April 3rd of 2020. We all know that's not gonna happen because you know, the big play going around, not leaving a lot of time for people to sniff each other's parts, uh, watching a movie in theaters. People are more worried about not uh, unliving their parents and unliving their significant others and trying to survive. That's, that's the type of year 2020 is. 2020. One of the things I found especially funny was how one of the producers just pretty much came out and said that the reasons why reshoots were taking so long was that they didn't know what to reshoot. I would be feeling indecisive as well if I thought that anything that we reshot, if Disney even sniffed like they didn't like it, they probably would just tell us to go back and do it again. And at this point, I'm guessing everybody involved in the cast directorial and producers do not want to hear, can you maybe do that scene again, ever again? Oh, and they also kept having a difficult time getting the actors back together because all the actors had uh, logically and smartly moved on to different projects that could possibly move the career forward in any way. Something that this movie is having a really hard time doing because it keeps f***ing up. It's not really the director's fault, it's literally the studios that he keeps going to. They just, just won't let him do anything. But hey, it's fine. He will never admit it. Don't worry about it. He's super happy about how the movie's gonna be. But it's definitely, it's definitely not an annoying set to work under. Why? Oh my god. And uh, about the thing about Disney being a terrifying monster putting pressure on the film, that wasn't a joke. Th that happened. Disney just came out and told the director that they were not happy with the cut that he had. And, and then they also told literally everybody, everybody that would hear, uh, I will put it in their word, that this movie had limited box office potential. That's what they told people. That's what they said out loud. So the director working under them would hear them and go, wow, you, you still want me to work under this? Are you, are you sure? You don't seem very confident. You don't seem very happy. And you, I think it would be better for everybody involved if this thing would just dissolve and go away. But no, Disney never gives up on projects, even when they're terrible mistakes. <laughs> oh, but uh, something that Disney was very happy about, something that they were uh, pl pleased, was that the fact that the things that the director did after the merger between Disney and Fox uh, got rid of any connection between this movie and the X-Men franchise in this X-Men movie. Cool. Because Disney, Disney's really excited that they can say out loud that the new Mutants movie has in no way, shape or form any connections to the MCU. Those are movies that we care about. Those are movies that we show confidence in. Those are movies that we don't tell most of the time our directors to go f themselves. It's not like the time that the one of their websites accidentally showed that the new mutants was gonna be a MCU film movie, it's not like they overreacted at all. That's not nah. They just did a really regular thing. They erased every single mention of the new mutants in the website because somebody made a typo. They erased every mention, every glimpse of its existence from the website. A, a, a little bit over the top, just, just a tad. Sure, the movie is very different. Sure, the movie is gonna be more of a horror or possibly young adult novel. Who knows? But, but uh, what this seems to me, what this smells like is just Disney desperately trying to cover their ass in every possible way in case people either hate this movie or this movie does very poorly financially. And I'm guessing Disney thinks it's gonna be both the way that they're acting towards the director and the way that they're acting towards this movie in general. Erasing every post? What are you, a crazy f***ing ex? What's wrong with you? Just chill. Disney, showing true support for directors and totally not f***ing them over, not making them terrified at all. 
That's the Disney way. In 2020, March of 2020, the director comes out and says, the movie is done. And this is where I got very confused, okay? The reason why I'm confused is, the director comes out and says that the film's production completely stopped when Disney was acquiring Fox. At this point in time, he stated that the movie was 75% done in editing and the VFX wasn't ready yet, okay? That, that makes sense so far. But then he claimed that none of the planned reshoots that were told to him by Fox to do hadn't been done at all. So 50% of the planned reshoots hadn't happened and, and but the things that he showed Disney, they didn't like. So he somehow went back without doing the 50%, with 75% of the movie ready, with zero additional reshoots done because the actors were too old at this point, edited the movie back together, Frankenstein style, to have something that resembled a movie that Disney was okay with. My, my question is, is uh, where did that extra 25% come from or where did it go? Was it 75% edited from the final movie, but the things that you showed Disney was things that they didn't like? This just sounds like the director stitched anything he had together just to be done with the project. Like, the director just sounded defeated at this point. He sounded like he was so ready to be done and move on to other things. Because by the way, Disney came to him when he was about to get a new TV show for The Stand and just go, no, no, you gotta come back and finish this, sir. And he's like, fine as long as I'm done. And here is a quote for him. And with this context in mind, see what type of tone this uh, quote has to you. I'll tell you this, if there hadn't been a merger, I'm sure we would have done reshoots. The same way every movie does pickups. We didn't even do that. Because by the time the merger was done and everything was settled, everybody's older. I think you can read on those lines the disappointment he felt under those two studios. It really showed how he just went from one studio to the next that did not feel confident in his vision and did not feel confident in the fact that he would make a successful film. At this point, I doubt it will be successful, but the studios definitely did not help this guy in any way. And then we have Maisie Williams. She, she came back. Look at that. Oh my God. There are things that connect in this video. I know it's a little bit loose, but she comes back and says this. This movie is exactly the movie we set out to make. Lies, lies, and more lies. I don't believe you. I don't believe you in any way. You want to know I don't believe you? Because the director admitted that he didn't even bother filming a sequel bait in the movie because he didn't feel confident that he would be able to direct a sequel now that Disney was in charge of the X-Men. Reminder, this started out with him pitching a trilogy idea. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna really hold my doubt on that this was the exact movie he had in mind when he started working in it. Now, the movie is supposed to be coming out in August of 2020 after the whole big cough happened, but now I am guessing that we'll have to wait to see what this final project even resembles because I'm sure the director doesn't know what it resembles like anymore. I am guessing that this movie is either gonna be a complete and utter mess probably a mediocre movie, somehow a miracle and it works out perfectly, or the last one, a, a complete show that shows that studios doing heavy meddling behind the scenes never works out for anybody involved. My money is in the last one.